Welcome to Sex Talk Radio, a podcast that explores kink and sex through candid and curious conversations. Join me and expert guests in exploring taboos and unpacking what it means to be sex and kink positive. I want to issue a trigger warning for this episode. This episode includes one or more of the following themes, rape, sexual assault, self-harm, and suicide. I recently squirted for the first time and it was a lot of liquid. That's why I'm so glad that I've since found Splash Blanket. They create incredible waterproof blankets for all types of fluids. They have them in a bunch of different sizes and textures and they are truly incredible and very absorbent. Go to splashblanket.us and use code SEGGS for 15% off of your entire order. Lube is important for a lot of different sexual experiences, whether it is solo play or partnered play. It can enhance sensation and just make everything so much more enjoyable. I really love Mochi Melt. Their product is extremely high quality. It smells and tastes delicious, and it looks great on your bedside table. My favorite flavor is Honeydew. 10 out of 10, I recommend and love Mochi Melt. Go to mochimelt.com and use code THEA, T-H-E-A, for 15% off of your order. Today's episode of Sex Talk Radio is sponsored by the HUD app. HUD is changing the face of casual dating by offering an alternative and empowered approach to commitment-free dating. Go to hudapp.com slash sextalk, that's H-U-D-A-P-P dot com slash S-E-G-G-S talk for a week on me. A quick note, the HUD app is available on both iOS and Android and is available to users 18 and over. Hi, Cassidy. (laughs) Hello. Welcome to Sex Talk Radio. Thank you for having me. Um... How many nights are you here in Austin? I am here um, until Saturday. So okay, a couple I, days. Yeah, I am. Um, I'm super excited to be here. There's a lot to talk about and a lot to cover. <laughs> we, yes, you know, I think with everything going on, it's yes. the right time. Yeah, I'm excited to jump in with you. Um, so are you, remind me, are you from Austin or Texas? But Or you used to live here? I grew up in... Austin, outside of Austin. Okay. I went to Lake Travis High School. Okay. And country vibes. Yeah. yeah or country football, very hoity toity. Okay. Very class elegance. Yeah. Just everybody thinking they're all that. How is that for you? Traumatizing. Sure. <laughs> and was the school big or? It was very big. Yeah. yeah. But I ended up dropping out and getting my GED online Mm. just because at that point I had started to come out about my transition and I... Are we talking about high school right now? Yeah. 14, 15? Yeah, 14. And I just couldn't be around it. Mm. I couldn't be around everybody. I had to just seclude myself and figure out who I was. Yeah, yeah. Um, Were you experiencing bullying? I was experiencing a lot of bullying, but it wasn't s- more so like pushing and shoving bullying. It was more so people calling me on random numbers and oh no, giving me like death threats about coming to my house. And, you know, oh, they honey. knew where we lived because in certain books in schools in the past, they would have like their address with like the phone book Mm-mm. and stuff. Yeah. Or, like yeah, yeah, yeah. people to look at to call their parents or whatever. Right. So people were always calling us, were always harassing us. Um, mm. It was a lot. So I, um, I couldn't, I couldn't be there. Yeah. So you started transitioning when you were how old? Thirteen or fourteen? I started fully dressing when I was fourteen. Oh wow. Yeah, and it was at the time. I was kind of living a double life. Mm. I so young. Yeah, like, trying to just figure out everything yeah. going on up here and on top of that just being a high schooler. I mean, age 13 14 is extremely difficult no matter what. Yeah. Without those circumstances. Yes. Yes. And yeah. just with the societal pressures and friends in your life, you don't really know who you can like trust with yeah. talking about something that big in your life and I was with the double life I would I had a job as a host um at a restaurant Mm -hmm. in Lakeway and 
they were the first restaurant that, or the first job, I should say, mm. that allowed me to be myself. Mm. And I talked with them about, I, I told them I wanted to transition and they were pretty much the first people that knew besides some of my close friends. And they gave me the opportunity to come to work as myself. And I love that. For me, that was huge. Sure. And, and at that age, having somebody older than you kind of just allow you to be yourself. Like, oh, yeah. It was very it. eye opening and I felt super lucky to be around them. But at the time, my parents didn't know that I was going to work dressed. Mm, okay. So I would have to drop a backpack out of my window above the garage and then wow. tell them I was going to work. I would leave in my boy clothes. You just wanted to be you. Yeah, I would leave in my boy clothes and then I would go to a Walgreens parking lot. I would change, throw that wig on, you know, put on my makeup, put on my glue on nails. Oh my God, that's like a movie. Go to work and then take it all off when I would wow. go home. Wow. And it was really defeating every single a lot of work every for a 14 single day. Year old to yeah, do. and I was still going through school at the time, right. so that was like my only time really to be myself mm. and then obviously when I got home, I would just kind of go straight to my room and then yeah. that was kind of my time to reflect and yeah. you know, dive into all my hidden makeup and eat. so you were hiding your desire to transition from your parents as well because yeah, at the time I didn't know how they would react. I mean, sure. it was a huge thing. It's like, huge how the thing. hell am I going to do this? Right. What well, am I, I mean, going to tell them? How do I tell them? Yeah. You, you're facing rejection and all of that. And to face from that every from side. your parents yeah. is probably really terrifying. Yeah. And I mean, with the rejection, kind of what um, my fiance is going through with his family, it's it's very unfortunate. Yeah. That somebody has to go through that and watching that on somebody from the outside, it's it's really upsetting mm. because that's somebody you look up to your whole life yes. and for them to not support you in your endeavors or who you want to be, you kind of feel lost and I don't sure. blame him for being upset about that. I would be upset too. I'm upset for him. So his whole family has um, they've re they've pretty much rejected me besides his mother. She okay. it took her about I would say a year or so to really fully come around wow. and which is fine. Everybody has their own time frame that they want to be comfortable um with kind of processing everything cuz yeah. I said in my last podcast that it's a transition for everybody kind mm. of to understand and process. So sure. she um you know, she calls me her future daughter-in-law. And Good. for somebody that has been through relationships that haven't worked over and over and over again, it's, yeah. it was a really huge moment. And it, it was just very um, but elating. Like, you know, you experience that rejection and those issues as a teenager. And then st it's probably... I still really, face it. It's yeah. fucking exhausting to like... Or to then be rejected, by, uh, like experience this rejection by your fiance's fan. Like, yeah. It, how do you feel worthy with all? Like, how do you build I, your confidence and worthiness? I've already kind of known my worth before all of this. Yeah. I knew that I'm a being of light and I'm going to shine no matter what, no matter what anybody says. And I just kind of have to hold that to heart and know that even though I've been through so many crazy moments in my life, it can't take away from my character and can't take away from me being a good person. Sure. And that rejection can turn you into a really, really mean person because mm. you feel like you're defending yourself all the time. Sure. You're in survival mode. Like you feel like somebody's going to say something or yeah. like – when, What's going to happen next? Yeah. When I used to drink, I'm about four mm. and a half, almost four and a half years clean from alcohol. So oh my gosh, I when I, have that in common. it's <laughs> seeing me when I used to drink versus mm. now, I was so defensive all the time. I would be looking over my shoulders at the bar. I would be starting fights that, you know, didn't have any means happening, yeah. but it was because of that rejection sure over and over again and 
even by the men I've been with, yeah, they fully, we get to the part of like, oh, we're talking, talking, talking. Mm-hmm. And then they kind of just fall off mm. because they're not comfortable with the fact of who I am and their friends supporting them or they're worried about more fear of the, judgment. Yeah, yeah. Fear of everybody. Yeah. And then wow. we're on the the side that's being looked down upon. Sure. Well, it's really, you know, it's powerful that your fiance is going through all of that with his family and now kind of the public eye as well. And he's a strong man. He's yeah. getting strong. He's yeah. definitely the only man that's spoken up Mm. and stood 10 toes tall with who I am yeah, and being proud of me. And I've never had somebody so proud of me in my life besides my parents and my friends, obviously, but somebody in a romantic relationship, it's really important. Want them to be your number one. Yeah. (laughs) Your supporter, your everything. And Mm -hmm. he, he just takes it to heart with everything that he goes through. Yeah. Um, he's a very intense guy. Once the, he <laughs> gets noticed. in the room, you know he's there. But I'm more, I'm a shy girl. But once people get Balance. to know me, yeah, I yeah. open up. But yeah. like, if you're not going to hear me, you're going to hear him. Mm, you probably feel and really protected. Yeah, he oh, yeah. is always going to speak his mind and he always knows the answer to everything. <laughs> so I feel super safe going to, to him with any yeah. one of my questions or um, he's the only guy that's supported my OnlyFans career and being out there in that type Amazing. of light. That's, that's an important thing to talk about because it's like, um, I don't have an OnlyFans. I have like a Patreon, but yeah, but any type, stuff. any type of subscription yeah. based sexy thing. Yeah, you're um, out there putting I, yourself out sometimes there. I get insecure. Like, what is a guy gonna think? Like, is this going to? But then it's like just coming back to the right guy will support yes. the hustle. And Absolutely, it's making me money, and I just know it's making you good 100%. money. hundred so. percent. Yeah, yeah, it is, girl. Yeah. Pay my bills and more. <laughs> so we, at the same time even with all of this money income coming in, we have remained very humble through this, I feel, because this could tear a lot of people apart. Yeah, let's get into it. Let's get into what has happened. So, I mean, um, I'd love, we can go back to your childhood at another point because I'd love to touch on that as well. But so, yeah, tell me what happened with, you were recently on No Jumper. Yes. And some of the clips went viral, I think is... We began or yeah, we were on no jumper about like three weeks ago. Okay. And oh, you only filmed three weeks. Filming was three weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. It was it was pretty recent. That means they posted clips right after. Right was, after. Yeah. yeah. The week after, pretty okay. much. And we knew that some of the clips were going to be chopped up, mm-hmm. and so I was taken nervous. out of context or just like not yeah. necessarily taken out of context. Just um viral Just, yeah um kind of giving the viewer a little bit of controversy of course and i think that was super important with it was because right. without the views a lot of people um kind of get lost in it but at the same time with all of the clips that have been going on we our message kind of got mm. Uh, skewed yeah fizzled out like what do you feel like your message is the two of you our message is no matter who a guy is it doesn't matter how you please a beautiful woman (laughs) no matter who she is that men that date trans women aren't gay Mm -hmm. and that's I feel like a lot of men are too scared to talk about that. And that's Mm. why me and Jesse have been kind of, that's why me and Jesse have been talking about it with so many people is because we want to show people that you don't have to be scared to be with somebody like me. And even if they are like, you know, we'll be the ones to talk about it. And there's, because also it's important to, you know, educate men 
because of the amount of men that are searching for trans porn and trans yes. dating websites. And um, I can't remember the exact stats, but yeah, I think it was like 75% or 80. Uh, the search for it's like crazy. trans porn has gone up 80% in the yeah. last two years. And it, I think that's amazing for all of just the beautiful women. And the that, curiosity. Yeah. Men are, are curious. People I are curious. Think, and that's amazing too. I think sex is supposed to be explored. I think people yeah. are so black and white about it that right. they don't see what pleasures certain things can bring you. And right. there's a lot of men out there that are getting pleasure from behind from their <laughs> wife. And yes. But then again, they're calling my man gay. Hmm. So it's like, I don't even top. Hmm. I get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing is I've always received. Yeah. I've always, I've never been, I'm a sub at heart. Sure. A hundred percent. Love that. Could tell. And uh, yeah, like, you know, I'm just like, oh, please. But also like, even if he was gay, there's nothing inherently wrong with no, that either. No. Or, you know, if he's somewhere on the, you know, you and I talked about like the, the scale, the Kinsey yes, scale. Like, yes. even if that was the case, like it doesn't fucking matter. People who throw loves who. the word gay around sure. so fast, no yeah. matter who you are, or no matter what you're doing, an yes. item could be gay or, you know, <laughs> yeah. a place could be. And I've never been somebody to really go down that route yeah but I've had a lot of friends derogatory yeah I've had a lot of friends in the past that have definitely used that as mm. a baiting term sure and you know it's yeah. kind of like oh like I, I mean really I don't think there's really and that's part of the intention of what I'm doing at the podcast is I don't really think there's a safe space for a lot of men to explore their sexuality in no. any way so like no I posted some clips recently about bisexual men because I've been you know dating them playing with them like right and um and instantly shut down by men in the comments of bi men don't exist um, no, they're just fags like I mean just mean and it's like they're this is why they're in the closet or not in the closet. Th that's why there's shame. Yes. Um, and guilt behind. Yeah. Th that's what um, Jesse talked about in the past was when he was first curious about women like me, he was yeah. pretty much disgusted, he said, mm. um, when he was watching porn. Mm. and But then it, he kept going back to it <laughs> and wondering why he yeah. was liking it. Sure. And... I He's think disgusted by it was the societal his, shame. Yeah, his thought process behind it and just knowing that like this at the time seemed wrong. Yeah. And I think that's really hard on a person not right. being able to talk about it with somebody in their life or not feeling comfortable with mm -hmm. their friends or significant others. Right. Um, and I think it really comes down to communication, especially in a relationship. And being so open with who we are and what we do, yeah. um, we we have a lot of fun. <laughs> good, Let's good. Say that that's important at the end. Um, so okay, so let's go back to the interview. The clip started going viral right away, and what's yeah. really happening in your guys? So life? obviously, the clip that went viral yeah. was, was that it? he sucks my girl dick, <laughs> and he's not gay because of it. And Very clickbait. Yes, that'll, yes, that'll do it. Yeah. That'll go viral. And it's just the fact of... Instantly a bunch of men were like, he's gay, he's gay. He's gay. Yeah, like, they just... Blow up. They were so quick to just put a label on him. And, sure. you know, if he feels that way about himself as identifying as straight, then that's who he is. And that's... Yes. It doesn't matter what anybody says or... We don't really even go through the comments because we just Good. already know. Good. It's honestly funny at this point because... I already know what the comments are going to be. And yeah, you've also experienced bullying and this kind of yeah, shit. Yeah, there are people talking about how I should be in a mental hospital and like all that. I'm like, pick me up. <laughs> Let me pick up some friends <laughs> on the way because we're all going. Like, oh but everybody's just on their phones going back and forth and they're really upset about They're like mm. ripping their hair out. Sure. Over Meanwhile, me being seen as a woman. Meanwhile, how's your OnlyFans account been growing since? It's amazing, girl. I've been traveling. I've been buying some ice. I've been amazing. Yeah, I've been buying a lot of shoes. Um, <laughs> but also, I've been trying to be really smart with my money. I'm learning about investing. Good. Oh yeah. And I obviously want to buy property. Cool. 
I want to have multiple properties yes. everywhere spread out so I can be <laughs> sexy in every state. I love it. And um, yeah, I'm like, let me show I think the distinction to make, like why I bring up OnlyFans is that despite the hate, despite the the thousands of hate comments and even threats you've experienced, and that's, there is such a deep curiosity and these yes. same men are going and paying you money to see Absolutely. what's under your pants and what are you doing 100%. with your partner and what it like they, they're curious they're going to talk shit and then they're going to pay you so and <laughs> it's crazy because i've had so many i've had death threats on only fans but it's like you're subscribing to my page to send yeah. me a Whoa. death threat but okay but you're still paying me <laughs> like <laughs> it's i mean at you, that point yeah here, i'm gonna show you yeah, just you kind of my on? i'm curious because my, my patreon is just slowly cranking so we're not gonna okay this is for February so far. Oh my God. Uh, $130,000. Yeah, girl. Sometimes I don't even. 40000 in tips. I wait. Get... Oh, wait. Wait. Is the total 400 The total's right here. Oh my fucking God. Okay. She's made in Feb 331000 I see. There's some. It's divided between subscriptions, tips, and messages. Yeah did you see what was the boost that you saw in only fans the via boost. no jumper like yeah so yeah. there was a huge influx of people that came yeah. from no jumper and also from the love don't judge that me oh, and jesse yeah. did yeah, yeah, yeah I and i think that it, been on a, you've been on a roll it, yeah with everything going on we i think it's important that sometimes i sit with myself and really um kind of be proud of myself for everything that I've accomplished because we get yeah. so caught up in our routine and our day-to-day -day stuff that we're always like, okay, what's next? What's, yeah. Yes. You know, what are we up to? That must be checking? our Libra shit because I'm the same. I'm, I just keep going and yeah, I don't take time. I don't really reflect on anything. I mm -hmm. just kind of keep moving. And I understand. sometimes I don't know if I want to reflect. <laughs> like in a way, I, I do, but... Sometimes I just have too much going on. And like sure. I said, I'm a Scorpio rising and a Scorpio <laughs> moon. So on top of being a Libra, I there's a lot up here that is just super intense. A lot of intense sure. emotions, a lot of um, overanalyzing everything, yeah. overanalyzing my whole life <laughs> and who I am as a person. And so there's yeah. a lot of Some, battles. Yeah, I feel you. Sometimes I realize, though, that I'm so busy and doing all these things to because I'm uncomfortable just sitting and being still with myself. Me too. And so I've been working on that with my therapist, like actually yeah. sitting down, meditating. Therapy's amazing. I've been locking my phone up at night. Like I've literally been doing all these things to You're hack. better than me because I sleep <laughs> with it right next to no. me. Yeah. And I well, know that's, I've heard that's actually really bad for you. Well, when you're waking up to 300 fucking thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, it's I like, I'm going to be, even. I'm like, hello money good morning good morning um i'm rich <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um so how often are you put do you post a lot of content on OnlyFans? i post pretty much every day okay yeah, i mean you should i'm because you can sexting just keep... people all the time yeah i i love i love sexting yeah i love talking like it gets me off yeah like, just i don't know what about it something like it's so personal but it's mm -hmm. also very safe at the same sure, time, the boundary feel, of the phone. Yeah, comfortable yeah. enough to be like, okay, I can let them hear this side mm, of me, but also yeah. feel protected in a way. Um, and that's why I feel like sometimes meeting with new people for collabs and content. Oh, okay. In a way, I feel like I have to not know them. Sure. To be just yeah. let it all out. I mean, that's fun. I like a little stranger vibe. Yeah, it's hot, it's a hot. little. Um, okay, so you me. are doing collabs, meaning like you're having sex with people for only yes. Time. Okay. Yes. So, but it's very um, every strictly regulated. We all have to be tested um, before every shoot. Okay. We there's like a consent waivers now too. There's like a there's whole consent waivers. We have to sign. Um, if you're going to be going on somebody else's OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. I exclusively mm -hmm. do OnlyFans right now. I haven't done any professional studio work. Oh, um, gotcha. But I have a lot of friends in the professional business, cool. too. And it's really exciting. And I love seeing them, yeah. you know, pop their pussies <laughs> on screen. It's so hot. And I think with this year and 
um, us girls just kind of being in the limelight of yeah. being trans, I think it's a really great time mm -hmm. for us to have our voices heard finally. And yeah, I want to be somebody that is able to talk with everybody about us I and love that. kind of give more into depth of us. Yeah. Um, and I mean, like, I created this podcast for a younger me that would have liked this. And it's like, you get to now speak to, yeah. you know, younger boys that want to transition yeah. to somebody that you would have wanted to hear from. And because, it's, yeah. Sorry. It's like, when I think about it, when I was younger, and I've said this before, and times were very different. They were. People that are transitioning right now it's, have a completely different... It is so hard and yeah. I um you know I I can't really get into much with that because I don't really like giving advice to anybody sure. that's under 18 I don't do sure. that but if they're over that age mm -hmm. as of now because like I said times were different mm -hmm. I was much younger um yeah but I when I look at myself at that age I was so naive with a lot of stuff mm. with I thought I knew everything <laughs> and I just I thought I had this picture of how the world revolves mm. and I and like how it would look after you transition. Yeah. And like I got dragged by my thong like throughout <laughs> life. Metaphorically. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. Um, no, but it snapped in half, mm. pretty much. but yeah, it was, it was definitely an uphill battle with a lot of things. And people are like, they think that I just kind of woke up one day mm. and chose to be this person. And I'd always, I like to tell people like when I was younger, before I transitioned, that was, that wasn't me the person sure. behind all of that yeah. was. Yeah. And so it was almost like a facade of a shell of a person because sure. nobody saw me for me except people that were really close to me. And I had only talked with them a couple times. And I remember my first time going out, my friends had dressed me up for Halloween mm. and we had done Mean Girls. Uh -huh. And they got me this blonde, gorgeous wig off of Amazon. And I loved wigs off of Amazon. That was my <laughs> shit. When, yeah. I'll, I'll jump back to that. But <laughs> the wigs, when I was younger, I would order them to my house. And oh. on my mom's card at the time. <laughs> and my mom would be like, what are these? Yeah. And I would tell them that they were like birthday presents. Okay. For friends. You don't get to see what's inside. Yeah. Or, they yeah. were just, uh, she knew they were oh, wigs. Okay. But like. I would my just be like, oh, I'm to, holding on to them. Yeah, I'm my friends love to, to wear wigs. Oh, my God. And the second I got to my room, I would rip open those mm. wigs and put them on. And I felt it was like I could see myself slowly becoming what I envisioned. Yeah. And that was it made me so happy. Yeah. And that was the only thing that made me happy. Nothing else. Every time I took it off, every time mm. I took my makeup off, every time... I would go to my room and that was my only time to be myself. Yeah. Like, wow. it was, I, I, I was very lonely. Yeah. I hope that you can create like a movie about your life. I hope like so, this girl. Feels like a good movie. Like, I, I really hope so because just the aspect of, I feel like a lot of girls can relate to growing up. And even though we were surrounded by a lot of people, we still felt very alone because. Mm -hmm. Nobody got it. Nobody understood yeah. us. And I went through a lot of intense therapy and, sure. um, you know, transgender therapy. And they would ask me a bunch of questions every single time. Like, mm. who do you see yourself um, in your dreams as? Oh, Are wow. you male or female? Are yeah. your dreams feminine? Are your dreams mm. um, from like a female point of view? And... From as long as I can remember, my dreams have been very, I believe, feminine and yeah. just very, I I would always dream of myself with long hair. This actually mm. happened recently ago. I had dreamt of my hair being naturally like super long. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I was, it was so gorgeous in my dream too. Yeah. And going back to my childhood, like that's all I could remember was mm. dreaming as a woman and 
Even wow. how I slept, I feel, is <laughs> just very, like Jesse says, I sleep like, you know. <laughs> Little princess. Yeah, I'm just out like a light. And uh, I think with those questions that they were asking me mm -hmm. um, about myself more and just kind of the educational purposes behind it, with transitioning mm -hmm. and if that's really what I wanted to do because once mm. you start you really can't go back I mean there's you start with hormones yeah I mean there's people out there that have detransitioned right. because of um personal stuff that has gone on in their life mm -hmm. but for me that's not an option because yeah. that's not how I feel right what do you like, mean once you start you can't like once you start hormones you, specifically yeah or, i just don't know much I mean, about the process yeah it's Love very um you definitely want to have your levels um drawn okay. for blood work and stuff like that it's very important to stay up to date with that because with hormones obviously you're switching your body's state of being mm -hmm. as well wow. but at the same time you're really not because it's like you already chemically feel that. Sure. So it's all, it's just validating that even more yeah. and kind of, it's affirming how I feel on the inside mm -hmm. to see when myself. When did you start hormone therapy? Um, I started hormone therapy when I was 17. Okay. But I was dressing from 14. Yeah. And so that gap between then mm. was my intense therapy mm -hmm. up until I was 17 because I think that was when they allowed me to. I was so you went through young. puberty as yeah, a boy. Yeah, but it wasn't even like, I never really even went through puberty. Like my hmm. voice had always been like this. My yeah. voice never got deep. And then I stopped growing when I was like probably in middle school. Oh. Yeah, like I just had all of these feminine features already. When I was sure. young, um, I remember this in... Um, I was in the school called Wilderness Oak in San Antonio, and okay. they had just built the school as brand new. I had switched there from a private school. And this kid comes up to me and asks me if, are you a boy or girl? And like, I froze because I didn't even, I didn't even know what You're to like, say. What I, I wanted want to be right. I what wanted to answer girl, yeah. but like, I wasn't. And yeah. so it was really confusing. And I was young at that mm. point, too. Like, even going through school, like, when we were on the playgrounds, like, I loved playing Scooby-Doo. I wanted to be Daphne. <laughs> like, I wanted to be chased so around cute. by the ghosts. By the boys. <laughs> yeah. Like, it was, you know, fun for me. And it just felt right. Nothing ever seemed like um, I know a lot of girls. There's a lot of um, feminization training that mm. goes into transitioning mm. for some people. Um, but for me, it was never, I didn't have to train like, myself. Like surgeries and bindings. It, it or... was more so kind of like, you know, you can have your Adam's apple shaved down. Mm. You could have um, like vocal lessons. You could oh, have I see. just feminizing training. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. So there's, Man, the stuff you, there's yeah. a lot of stuff. A lot of work. So like feminization. And that kind of plays into, there's a lot of different avenues with feminization with from guys to girls to anybody sure. in between. And, you know, it was never hard for me to pick and choose what I liked. I just loved you knew. You knew everything pink and girly. <laughs> and I had Barbies and yeah. rats growing up. I had the horse with the, that you could braid. I had the did you, did the your, Bratz doll head. Oh my gosh! The Barbie did you head. The hair. Did yeah. Your, did your parents ever like shame you or like express confusion about the Barbies and the Bratz like that kind of thing? I think that my parents they knew something. They was going knew on. something was up <laughs> because when I was really little, my mom took me to Target and we were in the toy section and yeah. like we're just like walking down. She said and. I don't even see the Hot Wheels or any of the yeah. boy toys. I went straight for this wedding dress Aww. that was hanging up. And it was just like a little like play dress up yeah. wedding dress. And I threw the biggest tantrum because I wanted it. Yeah. I wanted to wear it. Like it just, it 
felt right. It was like one of those like God moments. I was like, <laughs> oh, I found yeah. it. Like, and I was really little at this time. So I sure. threw a huge temper Toddler. tantrum. Yeah. And my mom bought it for me because I think as a parent, you just want to make your child happy, yeah. even though you don't really know what's going on. Sure. And, and, and how old are you? I'm 26. 26. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's like, like I was saying, I feel like for people that are transitioning right now, there's a lot more resources, a lot yes. more parents are a lot more understanding and educated. Yes. And, you know, what, uh, you know, 10, 15, 15 years ago, I guess, like, I, I like that, you know, your, your parents had. That. Yeah. And I got very lucky because I've heard some real horror stories with yeah. some of these girls. And I just want to give everybody a big fucking hug. Like I'm totally. such a girl's girl. I <laughs> want everybody to have all these amazing life experiences, but sometimes we can't have them because of the fear of, our security and our safety. Sure. Um, there's a lot of guys out there that will talk us up, bring us out and do all of these amazing things that seem good from a surface level, mm. but they treat us like shit. You mean men that are <laughs> dating trans women? Men that or? are seeing trans women, but not open about mm. it. I see what you're saying. Like the curiosity to explore, yeah. to have sex with, but yes. not to. Yeah. Out you know with how dating. many times yeah. like I've sat at home and mm. guys would text me only wanting to come over at night. Mm. And like, I love going out and doing fun stuff. I love mini golf. I love going <laughs> out. Like, I'm a the, daytime girl. Yeah. Like, I love going out on the water. I love doing fun things um, during the day. And but I mean, to you be, kept to being be seen as message. some sex, sex object yes. over and over and over again. And it was the same shit over and over. And yeah, you get to a point where you're just like, is this going to be my life? Right. And you kind of accept it in a way. But at the same time, uh, the dolls don't take shit. Mm. But like it, you, you accept like there, there's this massive desire for you, but you're you were seen as a exactly. sex object and coming over at night. I mean, that stuff is just like I'm just so impressed with how strong you are and like resilient you are to go through that kind of experience with men over and over and over again and to stick with your worth. It like, was a lot. Yeah. I mean, but at that time, too, I just wanted to feel loved. Sure. I just wanted to. Your little have validation. Yeah. Like, my validation card. How wanted you are. Swiping. Yeah. And I was like, feel <laughs> once I started going out, um, to the clubs when I was like 16. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I was a baby. <laughs> and I was going out on 6th Street. I was going out here. Yeah. I was oh, wow. going out to a lot of places. Um, Vulcan. I don't it, I haven't really gone okay, out. Okay, there at was all, a lot because I'm sober. So I <laughs> Yeah, no, there were a lot of places that I don't even know that are still here. Mm -hmm. But at the time I started realizing that guys saw me as a woman, you know, naturally yeah. they yeah, would, yeah. Um, you know. Associate. So then you had to encounter all, this whole new whole, set of problems. Exactly. <laughs> so it's not like, you know, you could go to a bar and talk with a guy and then go home with him and then like, you know, you're fine. And then you sleep, fuck, whatever, <laughs> eat, pray, fuck. Yeah. And then you don't have to really tell him your whole life story. Oh my God. And then... I see have where this to is going. Yeah, and then have to tell him on top of that who you are and then hope that, okay, well, it's a 50-50. Either he's going to be completely have a trans freak out or he's going to be accepting or 50 -50? he's going to be – Yeah, or you he's going to be uh, accepting and still not want to pursue, which is fine sure. too. And yeah. if you can still be accepting and not – Politely wanna, decline. Exactly, not want to – um, date a trans woman, but you yeah. could still be accepting and of so us. So freak out, meaning like you've had experiences at bars or talking to a guy where they like lose their shit. Like yeah. how? Could, like um, I, I had a crazy experience this one time when I was living in Austin. I was like eighteen and a half. This was right before I moved up to New York. Okay. And Ooh. yeah, I, this is why to. we got away. Yeah. Yeah. Because just crazy oh. shit. So I went to go meet this guy at a bar and we had a great time whatever we went out to eat we 
we were talking about kind of everything that happened in my life, my transition. He was infatuated with me. He okay. wanted to know everything. And okay. so we had drinks, whatever. We got back to his house. It was a gorgeous house. It was like up in the <laughs> hills. It was almost like love a ranch style, but it there wasn't really like neighbors or anything. Uh-oh. Right. <laughs> okay. Right. So we're like at his house, whatever. We're having more drinks. We're having a good time. Um, he wants to get to know me more on a personal level. Go down beneath my skirt okay. and see what's good. Okay. And this was his first experience with a trans woman. Okay. And I've had a lot of experiences like that. Being somebody's first. Being somebody's sure. first. And as much as it's amazing, it can also be very scary because of situations like this. Okay. So we were hooking up. Everything was peachy. I got fucked real good. <laughs> like it was probably one of the best nights wow. I had. Okay. So besides my engagement but <laughs> getting fucked by this guy fucked by this stranger okay like you know but at the time i was feeling validated okay and i was like oh my god he really sees me as mm -hmm. me and like maybe i'll become like a little housewife <laughs> like i'm having all these like oh, delusional uh, yep. thoughts and we end up just like passing out in his bed okay. and i wake up oh, to no. a bat to my leg a metal bat and he is on top of me, Honey. hitting my legs. And he, he hit my ribs so hard that it cracked two ribs. I cracked a collarbone. What the fuck? He was on top of me, hitting me with a baseball bat, telling me that he was disgusted by me, how he was going to R-A-P-E me with the <gasps> baseball bat. I can't even talk about this sometimes. That's okay. And, um, you know, he dragged me by my hair and threw me out onto his porch. And like all my clothes. And I had like, I don't even know. I had just like a little like t-shirt on and like mm. underwear. Wow. And I couldn't get up. And I'm on this ground. And I'm like, at that point, you just, mm. you're in shock. You just, I don't even you really remember it that much. Because I feel like I kind of blacked sure. out a lot of that. But, um, mm. you know, it was so difficult um going to my parents about that mm -hmm. and obviously i mean like called the cops okay, like good. you know yeah. so yeah um you know i had to get checked out i was in the hospital for about two and a half weeks like which is what? yeah with everything i couldn't fucking move i couldn't move Whoa. i was literally i'm what like five six like a hundred and ten yeah. pounds like i'm i'm just so glad that and they're some of these guys out here in Texas are tall. Mm -hmm. They're big, big boys. And tall. They're yeah. big boys. So Jesus. you know, the strength of this man overpowering me. Yeah. And that pretty much being my first and really only brutal, brutal experience besides a guy that I dated who again landed me in the hospital. Mm. So with wow. all these experiences, like being trans. I mean, it's the the one of the crazy elements about that is you feeling so validated and loved and then fucked. And then it's like a great a evening with this guy. A witch up, aggression. And then, and then you never know. It's kind of like the other shoe's always going to drop. You yeah. know, like that fear of like, well, when are they going to real like. And after that, it was always that waiting period. Like mm. after I would tell somebody and they would be accepting of me, it was always like, okay. How many days do we have? How many days or? are they going to, you know, really think about it? And sure, just get in their own heads about it and yeah. kind of. Um, but yeah, it was a really wow. brutal experience. He was uh, he was arrested at the time. Wow. I I was so, it, it was very scary. Sure, talking to my parents about it. When well, how old were you when this? Happened? I was eighteen. Okay, and it was um, uh, it was just really i'm like ooh, yeah. flashbacks yeah like, yeah yeah um only share what you feel comfortable yeah with. it was one of those things that you just feel so i was ashamed of myself mm, oh you kind of you know i felt like around. this happened because of who i am mm -hmm. if i wasn't like this i wouldn't have gotten a bat to myself mm. i wouldn't have got kicked out of a I got kicked out of a party one time. I got invited to a party and then kicked out and made a joke. 
when I got there. And somebody called me out and clocked my tea, told everybody I was trans, and they didn't allow me to have any of the drinks. I literally... And they kicked me out. Just, yeah. That's can't just believe. one night. Right. I just can't believe, like, this. You kind of have takes. to pick yourself back up and just kind of, you know, and that comes to another thing with we're always... We can always be defensive sometimes because, mm. we're, again, we're waiting for that shoe to drop. Right. What's this person going to say? What's this? But we can't live like that. We can't yeah. live on a scale of being defensive. Um, right. You know, everybody's going to have their own views. Yeah. I think this also plays into, you know, the argument about people saying this kind of thing is is a choice or the same with you know people I didn't, being right like the, uh, <laughs> if i could choose to not get beat up yeah that would be great that would be amazing or like the choice of you know being queer or gay or whatever it may be yeah. like these things are not choices because what happens on the other side is often a lot of pain and a lot of bullying mm -hmm. and a lot of discrimination yeah and i think people who aren't going through those um, life experiences, they don't really understand. Right. It's so um, easy to Yeah, to, to kind of overpass that and just say how they feel and then not really realize right. how that could affect somebody. Like, we're all just people. We are all just trying to figure life out. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. life is crazy right now. We're all just, I feel like, <laughs> thrown into the wild. And yeah. every single time we have to pick up the pieces and just keep moving. And um, yeah, yeah, everybody is, but with all the negativity too, like we've had so much support from just so many amazing people from all over the world, from That's Australia, amazing. New Zealand, the UK, yeah. Italy, like. So yeah, let's go back to that. So you were on the TV show, what's it called again? Love Don't Judge. And it's Love, really Don't big Judge. in yeah. Europe, okay. in, in England. I've watched a few episodes of yeah, that. Yeah, I had seen it on my Snapchat before. Yeah, uh, it's very clickbaity. Uh, yes, a couple <laughs> months prior oh, to us it. filming. And I had actually reached out to them mm. like a year ago. And they didn't see my message, but they saw <laughs> Jesse's message because yeah. he's just very good with his words. And he wrote up this whole thing saying but how you, you know, he's on dating it. a trans woman mm -hmm. and how it's controversial in sure. a societal standpoint yeah. that I feel like people who live a traditional life, anything that's different right. and outside of their box is deemed crazy yeah. and is is too much and they just want to throw labels on everybody and we're not all the same every trans girl has different views sure i recently squirted for the first time and it was a lot of fluid i was surprised i squirted like five times in a row the first time i did it and everything was drenched i spent the entire next day doing multiple loads of laundry and as excited as i was to have squirted for the first time i also realized that i needed a solution for the problem at hand. So I am so excited to be working with Splash Blanket. They create incredible waterproof blankets. Um, they can be used for squirting, for sex in general. They absorb up to a liter of liquid. I mean, I just use mine as a cozy blanket. They are extremely diverse and I absolutely love them. So go to splashblanket.us and use code SEX, S-E-G-G-S, for 15% off of your entire order. If you know me and you watch the podcast, you know that I like watching porn for my self-pleasure rituals. One of my favorite websites to go to is xoafterglow.com. What I have found with mainstream porn is that a lot of it is created for the male gaze. It's a lot about the man's pleasure, and it just doesn't feel super authentic and connected. What I really love about Afterglow is that it is for everyone, and it is founded by a woman. I've actually had the pleasure of working with her here in Austin, and I love their mission. You can also find educational porn on their website called EduPorn, and there is just so much to learn and watch there. So go to exoafterglow.com and use code exothea. I've had people ask if I was transitioning to a guy, like, you know, they mm. thought I was trans man mm. going from female to, I would tell people, yeah, I'm trans, oh. and they're like, oh my God, congrats, you're going to transition. And I'm like, <laughs> No, I'm, well, I'm already, I've already arrived. I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm already here. So, um, surprise. Okay, like, so you were on Love Don't Judge. Yes. And then like right after, you, and then No Jumper. Yeah, that was, um, we did Love Don't Judge 
or filmed a while ago. That was a while ago. I feel like so much has been going on. Yeah. I can't really wrap my mind around <laughs> what month was what. Sure. But we filmed that probably, I would say, three months ago. Mm-hmm. And again, we didn't really know when that was going to be airing. Mm-hmm. We never saw any of the clips prior. Oh, no. So, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a girl that, like, I love to see what I look like. And, sure. like, I was... I'll send you clips. I was, hor- I'll send you clips I was horrified when I saw some of the clips of myself oh, no. in the Love Don't Judge because, like, again, it comes back to gender dysphoria mm. and... um seeing kind of and a lot of trans girls can relate we still see that's why we got all of these surgeries to affirm who we are is because we still see who we used to be even if people don't see that we still do of course even if we don't want to Mm. and we we just have to go with it and um with the love don't judge with filming that i felt kind of in the dark about my looks And, you know, after something like that happens and people are commenting over and over about your looks, Mm, you start you start to think like, oh, my God, I need full facial feminization surgery. Mm. I haven't had any surgery. So, you know, they're coming at me and talking about all of these like negative things. And I'm like, well, I think I'm naturally pretty. So that will stuff. Yeah. Those kind of hate (laughs) comments will start to get in your. Yeah. And I just can't. It's like, you know, um, it keeps replaying in your mind almost. Oh yeah. I mean, I can get a thousand good comments and I can get the one person calling yep. me fat and I'm like, and oh, you focus fuck. on that all day and yeah. it's like, okay, well, and then it's like, why am I so worked up about that? But that's what they want. And yes. so I've learned that the best obviously response they're just, no response. Yeah. They're just miserable in their own life. And, and also at the same time, like curious and subscribing to your only fans yes. and following you and all the yes. things. And they, so. they want to see, what's going on in the life of a trans girl. And I think what's so great about OnlyFans is, I guess, no matter who you are as a guy, you kind of feel like sleuth and safe. Mm. Being on OnlyFans, you can kind of... It's not like somebody could go see who you're following like on Instagram. Like you can change your name on the usernames. You Mm -hmm. can, you don't have to have like your name or anything linked to it or a picture. You could just have fan whatever user eight seven whatever <laughs> but I've I've had a lot of people in my OnlyFans DMs actually talking to me about their life and about mm-hmm. you know their problems at oh, home. Yeah. And I swear that sex work stuff ends up being therapy. Therapy. Free therapy. Yeah. For men. <laughs> and they love it. And then they're like, oh wait, could you send me a picture of your ass again? <laughs> like on top of that. And back I'm like, to yeah. where we and were. then back to oh okay, that's amazing. Thank you. Like, <laughs> you know, and I yeah. I guess I really just talked with them about who they are as a person and their kinks and oh, fetishes. Talking about kinks. And like, <laughs> I guess too, like I haven't really explored it that much, but it, we talked about how like I love like sexting mm-hmm. on OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. Like that's hot to me. Definitely. It, it gets everybody aroused. It's yeah. kind of like, okay, what are they going to say? Sexting is dirty and fun and – you get paid and it's great. And you get paid. <laughs> so, you know, you just drop a, a good nude at the, at the, the allotted right. time. And then it's like, okay, so yeah. like, if you love me, you're going to buy it. There you go. Here's you know? my wish list. And, oh, and that's another thing is wish list on mm-hmm. Amazon is mm. amazing because I love getting gifts. I think just Favorite as. love language. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big like gift receiver. <laughs> big gift receiver. Um, so what has like filming content with other OnlyFans creators looked like? Like were you nervous the first time you did that? Or oh, God, what girl. is that journey it's, like? It's up and down too with you started OnlyFans when you lived here still, right? In yes. Austin? Yeah. I so I started only actually no. Or, I started OnlyFans when I lived in Buffalo. I lived in Buffalo, New York. Oh, that's right. For you like moved from here to New York. Yeah. So that was right Why? after that whole ordeal. <laughs> Why, where, what happened? Right. Oh, with that guy. Yeah. So that was right after out. the ordeal. And also, okay. too, my dad's uh, job was changing. So mm. we had gone up to Buffalo and like moving from the suburbs of Austin up to like out in the middle of nowhere, basically in the sticks of New York. And it's cold. Yeah. Like, I was like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. I don't belong here. <laughs> I, it's cold. Like, I'm ready to go back down south. Sure. But for me to be sitting in this seat, I had to go through all that shit in New York. 
that was, again, where a lot of my drinking happened. Mm. So I was 18 when we moved up there. And mm. then I lived there for probably, what is it? Because I'm 26. I lived there until I was like 23. Three. Oh, wow. Quite yeah, a few years. Would you go into the city to party or where would you drink? I would drink in my house. <laughs> Same. That's yeah, that was I was a loner drinker. Like, yeah. and I just, and that was that my way you can go all day. Yeah, that was my first apartment. So, mm -hmm. oh, so you moved out from your parents. Yeah. So when we moved up there, I was living with them for about a year or so. And even then I was still sneaking out. I was still going and doing shit that I shouldn't be. And <laughs> Just getting into really a lot of trouble and doing a lot of drugs mm. and just kind of because I was new in town. I didn't know anybody. And I felt yeah. like that was like the only way to meet people was to like go out Party. to the bar. Sure. That's how I felt. When and I then got I would college. be like ending up at like people's houses, like back at their place at like four or five a.m. And I'd be like, who are these people? Yeah. And but like I've met so many amazing friends in my life from those moments who have stuck with me through everything and they've seen that change in me and I think yeah. that's another thing that you know they've seen me evolve and sometimes I don't see myself evolve but mm. other people do it's really it's, got great to have it reflected yeah back to you. yeah and when they tell me about all these stories that sometimes I don't even remember because <laughs> like I yeah. was just I was getting fucked up and as much as I want to remember them and it's really it hurts me that some of yeah good moments in my life I can't remember because I was hiding and masking so much inner pain that I didn't yes. want anybody to know what was going on and I hid that so well in partying yeah um and I think that's another thing to talk about too is you get so caught up with that lifestyle and it's another validation thing like once I started being seen as, you know, beautiful going out mm -hmm. and that was addicting to me. Sure. Getting hit on. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I loved it. Having yeah. the doors open for me, getting into the clubs for free. Yeah. Like having drink spot for me, having. Well, you worked it, really hard to get there. Exactly. And it fed my, you know, I'm an addict. I had a drinking problem. I had a cocaine problem and I had a validation problem mm -hmm. because I wasn't getting that from anybody. So I had to seek it through these random men, sure. um, you know, and that wasn't the best way to do it at all because, mm -hmm. but it taught me how to love myself through other people not yeah. loving me. Yeah. And, you know, cause we always think about like who we are as a person and, if we could date us and stuff like that, <laughs> like we would I get, know. <laughs> right, like we would give ourselves the world, but like we look for ourselves in other people, and when that doesn't show up, we're disappointed. And I think we just, um, yeah, I I had a lot of moments where I was just disappointed in relationships and just not being fully accepted. Yeah. For who I am and all my sexy <laughs> shit I do. I uh, I recently deleted all my dating apps because I realized I was doing, you know, the it's swiping a for a little hit of validation. Yes. Like, I mean, even not necessarily. To see if it matches. And I'm like, yeah. And if it didn't, I'd be like, oh, womp womp. Well, for me, <laughs> it's not even the match. It's just like the then having conversations mm -hmm. like that new that new relationship energy or that new yeah. flirting energy. I was getting hooked on that because I have a super addictive yes. personality, too. And I was like. I need to cool my jets here. Like the yeah. right person is going to come into my life. And it's just, I mean, everything in our world, especially technology wise, is designed to be as addictive as possible. Yeah. And it's very swiping. fast satisfaction. Sure. Um, like you were saying with the dating apps, like you yeah. just swipe, swipe, swipe. You could get off on sexting all day. Like, right. and, um, you know, talking with these guys on <laughs> these dating apps, you know, I would tell them straight up and then... You know, I, it was almost like a little game for me. Mm. Once I would be like, okay, so I would lay out the tea, tell them, and I would wait. And I'd be mm. like, okay. Tell them that you're trans. Yeah. And yeah. I would, because I, after just so many stupid experiences yeah. and like, I used to get with guys and not tell them, mm. like, you know. That could end you up in dangerous A lot of dangerous like. situations. Yeah. Like yeah. I, yeah, I was not. The surprise. Uh, doing the Lord's work. I, it's okay. I was, yeah, but like I, 
I wanted to like have those exp- those mm. like woman experiences that mm. I thought, you know, uh, every woman, every woman at the time goes through, you know, mm-hmm. growing up. So I wanted them and I didn't want the trans aspect to take away from that. Mm. Um, and so like I would go out on dates with guys and I wasn't going to hook up with them the first time without telling them, obviously, because like they sure. would know. You but just wanted to see what it felt like I, to be treated yeah, just like, like a I just cis wanted woman. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to be judged or ha- like have a preconceived notion about sure. who I am. Because once somebody hears trans, they automatically have like the gears rolling in their head <laughs> and then sure. all of these questions. And then yeah. they're asking themselves like in the first question they ask themselves, well, I'm not gay. You know, why would I be with? And it's like, well. I present as woman. Yeah. You know, everything else that comes after that is just who you are as a man and what you're open to sexually. Sure. And if you're comfortable with your sexuality. And I think a lot of men who comment on my stuff, all of these hateful things, Mm. again, it comes down to like they're so deeply suppressed that they can't live their true authentic life and it comes out in, you know, and sometimes hate, it comes, hate speeches and paragraphs sure. and death threats and because they just don't know where else to turn. And in their yeah. personal life, they can't talk about it with anybody or if they're right. in a relationship with their significant other. A lot of men are in relationships and they're unhappy mm-hmm. with children and a wife because that's not what they want. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, so through your transition, did you, and do you currently still exp- experience gender dysphoria? Um, because I know it doesn't seem like you have any plans to get, um, bottom surgery or anything. And I'm just curious if you could yeah, share I, more on that. I got so comfortable with my body after I started OnlyFans mm. because I, I'm a person that like, I always like to build my confidence and I was seeing this guy at a time um, before I started OnlyFans Mm. and he made me feel like I was going to have a relationship with him. It was getting to the point where he was flying me into town and we were talking about like, you know, he was going to help me move my stuff down to Austin when I moved there. And that was like another reason why I was going to move to Austin from New York Mm -hmm. um, at the time. Um, So... I was seeing him and then he really hurt me with Mm. just a bunch of lies and, you know, you pretty much invited me to stay with you for 10 days. You fucked me. You used my body. And then I find out all of these other things. And then I find out from friends that, oh, he's not looking for anything serious or like he was taking me into his job. He Mm. was taking me to see his friends, meet people, introduce me and like. That's really big for, for a girl. A yeah, that's yeah. big for a girl like myself because yeah. a lot of the times we don't get to experience that. Right. You're the secret. We're the secret and we're being hidden in their house while they're going out and doing stuff or being told to look good when they come home or like, mm. you know, so going out and actually meeting people, it's an experience that, you know, it's it feels like a once in a lifetime almost because you don't know when the next time you're going to get that mm-hmm. from like. So you got really excited about it. Yeah, him. I was super excited and everything seemed to be going right. And then, you know, I got back t- to um, New York after just like, you know, we were going back and forth because he was being like starting to get like distant already. Like I had left and, and like, feel it. yeah, like I could just feel the vibe through the text. He was super yeah. guy. Like I left, I got home and I texted him. I was home and like, I didn't hear anything. Yeah. And then like, I texted again, like later on in the evening. Oh, sorry. I'm busy with work. Mm. You know, just that's very, how very, that's how it starts. right. Like, All men do okay. Like, I'm sure you're very busy with work. Like, <laughs> so, you know, I, I was just like going in my head, like, I was literally circling my p- apartment, like walking yeah, around pacing, pacing. <laughs> because I was just well, like rejection. I yeah, mean, I've done the same thing when yeah, I, got rejected. I, I was like, who the fuck do you think you are right. making me feel like I thought I was going to move? From yeah. You. Like and then fuck. just to be told by a certain amount of people that like, oh, actually, he's not like looking for anything and he just sees yeah. you as a friend and like. 
sex object. Yeah, and I was like, oh, okay, but that's not what we were talking about at 3 a.m. Mm-hmm. when I was wrapped up with him in bed. <laughs> like, so like, you know, they come back and they tell me that, you know, he's just not ready and stuff like that. And it's like, he's still not texting me at this point. It's other oh, wow. people. So it's like, it's like almost they see it as a joke. Mm. You know, they they want to be with us and they want to have that experience, but they don't want to. Sure. Um, they want to like check it off their box. Yeah, which they, is and gonna... that's it. We're a checklist on their bucket sure. list. And, you know, be with a trans girl, you know, be with a. I've been to a bunch of bachelor parties, um, mm. you know, that have um, booked me for certain mm. stuff. And I've had some experiences that. What do you mean booked you for stuff? Like if you don't mind me booked talking. me for um, like, you know, a private fun. OK, a private like <laughs> um, bachelor party. OK, so they booked me um, for a trans experience. OK, for their guys. And it's so funny sometimes because you get like the mix of guys that are kind of like making fun of me while I'm literally like, you know, Honey. doing a dance for them or like showing off for them. But then, Ugh. you know, there's guys that are 100 percent into it. And so you have these whole ranges. Wow. And you kind of had to read the room when you go in. And sure, I'm strapped all the time. When, when with a gun, yeah, okay, <laughs> when, right, <laughs> all right, strapped both ways, <laughs> but yeah, I'm not. I mean, I, that's I, in my mind. I'm literally going through how dangerous this is. Yeah, for, but you're so tiny. But yeah, and at the same time, like safe, it's girl. like I, you know, even with um, you know, a firearm, it doesn't matter. I mean, if my purse is like over on, you're tiny. Like yeah, like yeah. I'm not gonna be able to fight off ten dudes. No, wow, I could, I could try. <sighs> With my trans powers, <laughs> but you know, like, wow! You I just are, um, you're brave. You're brave. Yeah, like, but at the at at that same time, it's like those situations we put ourselves in because sometimes if we work a regular job, there's a lot of discrimination that comes from that. Right. And with um, online work and mm-hmm. sex work and mm-hmm. like all of these things you get to experience more acceptance from people that have right. the same likelihood of a mindset as you. Um, yeah, and I mean, that's that's a great point. Like as a trans person, you're going to go into a nine to five and get discriminated, bullied, you know, and yeah, have to issues. worry about people face to face interactions and, and make ten dollars an hour. Yeah, I was working in a salon and I was making uh, like three fifty a week yeah. at the time. And Look at you now, girl. Yeah, like add some, <laughs> what? plus some zeros. Yeah, five zeros to that. Like, I mean, and that's the thing is, despite the online hate and discrimination you end up receiving, um, there is also there are so many people that are interested in yeah, trans or from a sexual standpoint, just like we talked about the porn searches jumping right. up, and so it's like there is this demand to learn more about you to see more of your body there's this curiosity and so there is a lot of you know for any trans people listening that are over 18 right. like you've got an opportunity people are Absolutely. curious and and i think you know with being trans it's people think we're limited to certain mm. things like i could still be a real estate agent <laughs> sure. i could still be yeah. all of these things mm-hmm. i could still dive into i love dipping my hands into everything i yeah, want to like tell. i've lived so many lives well, libra like, I'm, shit yeah i'm like i want to write a book i'm like i want <laughs> oh, to absolutely yeah so yeah there's all these things that i want to do and i feel like um with each accomplishment I've done, it's like, okay, it's a new era now. Sure. You know, and I look back and I'm like, oh my God, I've been in, you know, the New York Post. I've been in all of these um, Austin magazines. Mm -hmm. I've been on No Jumper as my first podcast. Then this is my second podcast. (laughs) And it's amazing because it's just going to keep going and keep evolving. And I think that it's so important for trans voices to be on podcasts and talk and not be afraid of who's on the other side of the camera. Yeah. Because like we're sitting here. The message is more important. Exactly. And people are going to hear what they want to hear. Yes. With certain things. And I think with me and Jesse's message is that you can be around trans girls and 
feel so secure in yourself and in that masculinity. if you're worrying about what other men think of you, then yeah. that's a problem. Sure. Like that's a problem in themselves that they have to figure out. And, you know, everybody has their cup of tea. I might not be somebody's cup of tea and that's fine. Yeah. You're not mine. <laughs> like I was talking to myself in the mirror before I got here and I was oh. like, I what was were like, you saying? I was just telling myself, like, because I saw some of the clips in the oh. last podcast, and I was like, I'm just talking with my hands. I'm, I'm a mm. very animated person. That's good. Like, I love just being who I am. And I think with, <laughs> you know, showing off my life online, I think people need to just see an authentic se like yeah. self-image of myself. Yeah, definitely. Um, so going back to your childhood really quick, cause I'm just curious, like from your earliest or from your parents' earliest memories of you, it sounds like from their earliest memories, you're wanting to dress up, wear dresses. What has your transition and, and becoming you looked like for them and your relationship with them? If you don't mind sharing. Yeah. I think that my parents, I've talked with them about kind of their experience with a parental standpoint mm -hmm. because at the time I was just wanting to benefit myself and do whatever I needed to do but yeah. I wasn't really seeing how it was affecting other people and throughout my tr transition I've learned that you know it's not easy for other people to go sure. through that and you know I mentioned this in my last podcast that your parents are essentially losing a child and gaining another one but it's mm -hmm. like they're gaining a child that had already been there the mm. whole time so they're really just seeing them as their true self and sure. but there is loss that I've, I've heard yeah that. and with yeah. the name change there can just yeah right can be and you know you you have this child up until xyz point and then they tell you this and then you have to kind of wrap your mind around it and up until i discovered mochi melt i felt like buying lube was an embarrassing thing i would get it from target put it in my little bag and hide it it also was just like not very presentable i didn't want it on my bedside table um, and when i found mochi melt it just really changed my perception of lube in general and i've honestly been using it in a lot more of my sexual experiences lately Lately because it's just so different. Silky and smooth. It tastes delicious. It smells delicious. And it's just, it really elevates a sexual experience. I think that there are a lot of misconceptions about lube. And I honestly find that it enhances most sexual experiences. Um, my favorite flavor of mochi melt is honeydew. And honestly, like you could, you could eat it. It is so good. So go to mochimelt.com and use code Thea, T-H-E-A, for 15% off of your order, and I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Today's episode of Sex Talk Radio is sponsored by the HUD app. HUD offers an alternative approach to commitment-free dating and is geared towards supporting women and exploring their sexuality and intimacy in a safe way through conversations around consent, healthy communication, and boundary setting. HUD was the first to roll out safety features like auto blur photos and video chat capabilities. I've been using the app for a little while now, and personally, my favorite feature is the bedroom feature, where I can see a glimpse into somebody's bedroom desires. So for example, it will literally say Thea's bedroom, and then BDSM, bondage, dirty talk, impact play, etc., which makes it that much easier to assess your sexual compatibility with someone. HUD is really future forward in how they're evolving their app, and I'm excited to continue using it for casual dating. Go to hudapp.com slash sextalk. That's H-U-D-A-P-P dot com slash S-E-G-G-S talk for a week on me. A quick note, the HUD app is available for both iOS and Android and is available to users over 18. So my parents, I had to lay it all out for them because even though they understood, I don't think they fully grasped it at the time, like what it would... Well, and it was a little bit before, entail. like, yeah, it's things were different even just 15 years right, ago. Right, right. Um, and that's crazy when I think about it. Like, right. Whew, 15 years. Or, like, I've been, yeah. like, this journey for 15 years. Or maybe and, more like, like 10. You've been at it for, like, 10. Yeah, yeah 10, 12. Like, it's it's yeah. a lot. And, um, you know, my parents, they, at first, it took my dad some time. Like, it took my dad probably mm -hmm. about a year to come around. Like we were still all living in the same house and- Come around from where to where? Um, Come around to just see me as, you know, his daughter. Mm -hmm. And um, 
you know, I think for a dad too, that's hard. Sure. Um, seeing your son not want to be a son anymore and transition into something completely different than what they know to be. Yeah. And um, yeah, we were living in the same house at the time because I was at home and I would have to tell my dad when I was leaving, mm. like the house, because we had um, like glass doors in his office and he did a lot of office work at the time. So I would have to text him and be like, hey, I'm leaving because he didn't want to see me, because, <gasps> you know, because he was at the time, oh. he just couldn't kind of process it. Oh, honey. And so That's like, you know, man, the, the, the levels of rejection though, there from a yeah, parent not like, wanting to see you. It's, it's hard and going out and then just like trying to find validation through so many people. I ran away like multiple times. Like, so you hid when you would dress as you as Cassidy. Yeah. You would, he, you would, well, I was at the, at the time would, I was already transitioned. Yeah. At the time yeah. I was already dressing okay. and, um, what didn't he want I, to I had see? told my parents and, mm. um, you know, it was just a really long year. It felt, yeah. it felt like, you know, that weight of like, are my parents ever going to truly like love me? Mm. You know, did I disappoint them? Did I not be who they wanted me to be? Sure. Um, all of these things that were going through my mind at such a young age. Yeah. Too. And, um, you know, after, yeah, about a year or so, I remember my parents telling me that we were going to go out to dinner mm. and that I could, you know, go out with them. Mm -hmm. And you wait, know, they wouldn't they didn't want to be seen with you. They then? at the at the time, uh, it was very hard for my mm. parents to grasp wow. myself in public. Wow. Um, when me and my mom would go shopping early on. This was early on into my transition when I wanted to be Cassidy. So yeah. my mom having to switch names and everything. That can take a while. Yeah. They've got to be patient. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and I didn't understand that at mm. the time. Oh, so I was like, yeah. why can't you just call I'm Cassidy. me Cassidy already? Like, yeah. you know, but at the time, like my parents had been calling me the other name up until so many years. Mm -hmm. And like, I remember being shopping with my mom, she said my dead name, mm -hmm. and I just like didn't even turn around because I was like, "That's not me." That's how that's how people learn, though. I think. you know, so I'm like, yeah. I'm not turning around until you wow. say my name. Wow. And you know, after so many different points, Cassidy, that's me. Definitely. Like I can't see myself as anything else. Yeah, and my parents can't, and you know, my parents brought me out to dinner with them, and that was. One of those experiences that I was like, you know, and I think that really opened my dad's eyes um, to seeing that, like, mm. we just looked like a normal family going out to eat. Right. And I think there's a lot of scarcity and fear of how sure. other people would view me right. if somebody brought me out with them. You know, and I think a lot of girls go through that. Mm -hmm. Um Parents have to practice too with yeah, things like that. I'm yeah, assuming. and it's not get comfortable. There's no guidebook, no, on how to raise. Well, somebody. there is now, or there's, I mean, there's some there's books a, there's now, a but, lot, but you know, there's a lot of not for your parents. research and stuff. But it's also a lot of life experiences that women like myself have gone through, yeah. and you know, that's why we have to keep talking about our lives because you don't know who's going to hear it on the opposite end and really right. need to hear it. Maybe at that point, mm -hmm. and. You know, if I could listen to myself when I was 14, you totally. know, 13, those ages, like I probably would have learned a lot more and been probably in a lot better headspace. But then again, we all had to go through everything we mm -hmm. go through to get where we are. I had to go through my addiction to be here. You know, you have to give up your old life for your new life. And yes, girl, I wanted my foot in that golden door so bad and <laughs> but I, I couldn't get it with you know going out and partying so much it, yeah. it was exhausting and I was losing myself to yep. you know everybody else mm -hmm. because I was giving them my energy and not myself would you advise I would you advise for young trans people 18 19 to like get a like move away from their parents or not necessarily away but like I think that if your home life isn't good, it could be very scary. And unfortunately, mm. I I can't say that I understand, but I'm willing to listen and be somebody that, you know, could be an outlet to somebody that just needs somebody to talk to. Mm -hmm. And 
I think with dealing with those family issues that arise with any type of person that's seen as different than what their family knows them to be, it's hard to figure out what you're going to do, I feel, yeah, with your life because your support system at home is what you know. And without right. that... And also it's important for people to get the push and to to explore the world and to not experience anything yeah. that their family might be putting on. Right. Them. And um, with that being said, I mean, there's so many people um, that are just shunned by their parents, no matter if you're trans, straight, anything. A parent can shun their child for anything mm -hmm. or be disappointed in them for anything. And um, I think... A lot of people just look at the fact that, again, oh, I'm trans, just throw them in a box. Right. And that's it. And then close the case, seal it, and then not have to listen to anything that we have to say. Yeah. And it's it's really tough because no matter what we say, just because I'm trans, I'm pushing something. Mm. Because I'm talking about my life. We're talking about my experiences. Right. Right my experiences are just as important as anybody else. And I think that I'm just so excited to start hearing <laughs> more women like myself talk on podcasts yeah. about everything that we go through because it's been a painful life. Yeah. But we can't live in yeah. that pain and fear. I'm still going to be hot. I'm still going <laughs> to be getting paid. I'm yes, still going to be taking trips on yachts. <laughs> Um, okay, before we wrap up, there's a couple things I want to touch yeah. on. First, let's talk about your engagement, because that yes. also happens. <laughs> no, it's honestly... Big trip to LA. Yes. It's something that... And I posted this in my... I think I posted this in the caption of the video, that somebody like me, we always dream about you know, mm. that fairy tale wedding. We always want that person that we feel safe with and that sees you for you yeah we want to go through life with and mm -hmm. just experience all the amazing things that life has to offer and we're shot down just because we're trans and i think it's a big moment to show yeah. that you can love somebody and no matter what they have underneath their skirt or their any, cute pink mini yeah, skirt. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my pleated mini skirt. Like, and he just, I'd never been put on a pedestal like that. And, you know, I'd had guys that were literally just too afraid to even bring me to like mm. a birthday party. Just stupid shit that they get in their own heads. And this man fucking proposed to me in front of a room full of people. And <laughs> honestly, oh, nobody yeah. there, I'm sure knew I was trans. And so people think there's another thing like, oh, mm. like, you know, there's this sense when of you pass when you're passing. yeah, passability and like, you know, passing privilege and mm. stuff And there. Sure. You know, can be times where that can be dangerous as well. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, for trans women that are passable, you know, I can't even ima imagine what cis women go through with stuff like that. But then mm. you have these guys that are hitting on us and they don't even know anything. And then that could lead into a whole other thing. But right. he's so he doesn't give a shit what anybody thinks about him. And I think that's a real man. <laughs> if you don't care about what other people say about you or think or let that yeah. Well, and he's your, so committed to you. I mean, the fact that he's willing to lose family members because of the love that and you two have. At the time, it, it felt like it was my fault. Sure. It would, part, it would be hard to not feel guilty. I'm yeah. Assuming. He got fired from a job because of me. Oh, my God. He that's, got, not le that's not that, legal, though. Right. So we're in the middle what? of a whole okay. like lawsuit with that. So that's wow. another thing. But they yeah, fired him. Yeah, they fired him for dating me they said he came with too much baggage and he needs to go to a therapist okay the only baggage i have is louis vuitton <laughs> so i mean it's heavy but i mean i I'm could dead. get in it and you could roll me to a therapist oh like, my god <laughs> great sound but, um, great sound no, bite. like he just <laughs> he's very adamant on if he wants to be seen as who he is and that's fine yeah. You know, he's an amazing person and he loves with all of his heart and I miss him so much. 
Um, Is he at the hotel room? No, no. Oh. I'm here in Austin by myself. I didn't know that. Yeah. So like, you know, also too, it, oh I gosh. love traveling with him. Yeah. And sometimes when I'm by myself, I get so like nervous and just like my anxiety starts to kick sure. in. More. Oh, so I didn't know you were like, here you know, alone. Yeah, your safe spot. So, you know, we were FaceTiming probably yeah. until about like 2, 3 a.m. last night. Oh I was gosh. like, I got to get to bed. When do you leave today? Um, do you know when your flight is? I leave Saturday. Oh, that's right. You're yeah, here. So you have friends here. here yeah. Yeah. Family so or I'm, friends? I'm excited to see a couple of people. Okay. I have um, one of my friends. Um, I think her son's birthday tomorrow. Okay, cool. Or I think I missed. You're not going to be lonely. I just no, make yeah. Sure. So I, I have a lot of people and, you know, I, you know, I'm always out making a bag. <laughs> So I, I always find something to do. I'm so like, I feel self-sufficient. I could like talk to a wall and be I fine. love that. But it, <laughs> it definitely does get lonely traveling. And sure. He's so funny. I thought he was here and you're like, I miss him. I'm like in the hotel room. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. I'm like, that's true love. Yes, I, was, I want no, that love. <laughs> no, I, I miss him. I miss our dog. Oh. Um, so I'm I'm excited to get yeah. to see them again. But <laughs> I, I was excited to also see my friends. And with sure. his travel stuff going on, it worked out perfectly. And Good. then I'm off to L.A. for the Tea Awards. What's that? Um, the Trans Entertainment oh. Awards. Ooh. So um, I'm not nominated because I don't do production work. But oh, this is for porn. Yeah, this okay. is for porn. But there's a lot of... Um, do you know Emma Rose? Yeah, okay. I love Emma. She yeah. was so sweet. We you actually, know her? Yeah, you've we, met her? We met in LA okay. for the first time. And She's hot. Yeah, I love her. I, <laughs> I can't her wait on. to work with her one day. Yeah, ooh. Like, that would be dream would break the yeah. internet. De probably. And she's so sweet, so down to earth. Amazing. And um, honestly, when I was meeting everybody at XBiz, mm. it was so great to just see so many beautiful women that I see online just in person. I'm like, yeah. yes. Like yes. everything about it was I was um From iconic yeah validating and fun yeah and like we just feel so important when we're Good. together it's like we sure. always show out like if the girls are gonna go out we're gonna go out <laughs> and I think again with these OnlyFans things mm -hmm. and being online and being seen as you know um an empowered sex symbol, yes. I like to call it. I look up to Pamela Anderson a lot, oh my God. too. Like, she's amazing. Yep. And just the life she's lived, and j she's so poised. And mm -hmm. everything she's been through, um, just with, like, production work and, like, a lot of... She's the having another moment right now. Like, yes. she's doing no makeup, lost yeah. the skincare just line. A very vibe. simple life. And I mm -hmm. love that for her. Like, I, I can't wait to get to a point where I'm ready to just, like, buy a little, like, farmhouse out <laughs> in, like, the Cotswolds in England and just get out there for a little, like, There you go. Summer grandma vacation. vibes. Yes. Yes. Coastal um, grandma. So I would love to chat before we wrap up a little bit just about your journey with your own sexuality and your body and what yeah. pleasure looks like for you if you're comfortable sharing. Yeah. I'm sure the listeners are curious. Yes. I I think a lot of women, cause I love being pleased. I love when a guy gets down on his knees and looks up oh, at me. That's kind of dommy. Yeah. Like I, subby, I get, but yeah. like I can get dommy, <laughs> but at the same time, like, we love put an me, energy put, exchange. Yeah, put me on my back, like make me feel like baby <laughs> girl, like on the bed. Like I, uh, throughout my transition and just kind of my whole life, I think I've always trying to been finding, I've always been trying to find what I'm into. And there's sure. so many things that just pop up and like so many kinks or fetishes yeah. that honestly, like I'm, I feel like I'm pretty reserved compared to a lot of people. I haven't really gotten to explore my yeah. kinks and fetishes because I've been a fetish for other people. Oh my gosh, totally. So well, now, now it's you your know, time. I, I love exploring more, but yeah. I've always been somebody else's mm. experience. And I haven't sure. really gotten to experience a lot on my own. Like I don't really do a lot of toy play mm. like I do it for my only fans and mm. it's fun and it's hot but like mm -hmm. you know I don't really explore my body that much and I think it's just from a point of having all of these kind of negative things being said about you your whole life sure and just trying to figure your body out yeah. and I think 
with that's why I started OnlyFans was for that self confidence. Sure. Well, and look, you know, yeah, like the, once the they nut- started messaging me and paying for my stuff, I was like, oh my god, people w- mm. want to see me. Yeah. You know, and that was that validation boost in itself was mm-hmm. like, oh my god, and I'm making bank from mm-hmm. this. And you do like full nude and full nude. I and actual have scenes with people. boy girl scenes. I have. I did a um, three way girl scene, huh. and that was my first. Um, girl on girl. Okay. Scene. And I was um, very nervous. Sure. I was so nervous because yeah. they were gorgeous. And I was just like, oh my God, like, you know, they threw on their hot strap ons and they fucked the shit out Is of this me. This woman? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they were very dummy. Like, and I'm, <laughs> again, like anything that puts me in a submissive role, I like. It could be anything. So mm-hmm. I feel like that's something that I've been exploring more. Me and Jesse have been. You know, power dynamics are yeah. We're very open with our relationship, especially with having to film content and having to work with other people. Lots Um, of communication required in a partnership. Yes, and it's it has to be very professional. It has to you know, if I have collabs coming up, I tell him you know this is who I want to work with. He'll send me guys sometimes and be like, (laughs) I want to see him. I want to see this guy fuck you. Yeah, I love when guys are into that. Yeah, he loves seeing me be pleasure. That's great. Yeah, no matter if it's him, Mm -hmm. another guy, three guys, pass me around. We love it. (laughs) (laughs) Like, and I I just love being that attention whore. Like, I love, and that makes me feel super feminine. Mm, Sure. Being in a way... For myself, at least, for yeah. my personal experience. Like, yeah. I, being that, like, center of attention, that woman in the room, like, <laughs> you have all these dicks around you. You're just like, wow. That's one of my fantasies that I have uh, not ha- ma- made happen yet. Yeah. I want to like, start with a male, male, female threesome. Yes. And then I want to yeah. ideally add. It's it's a really bunch of, fun, like, bunch again, with, like, right? Like, that's what I want, like, on my wedding day oh like down a staircase I, I saw this hot video <laughs> of, of this staircase and this girl like sucking a dick on each staircase and I was like I want to be in my wedding dress oh doing my, that I got a hockey I do it I do a confessions on Sunday on my Instagram yeah. and somebody said that that on not the staircase but on their Maybe wedding night <laughs> the guy on their wedding night orchestrated another guy to fuck his wife yeah, on their wedding night. absolutely you know the wedding content's gonna go crazy <gasps> oh my god yeah the dress. Talk, talk to me. I love viral I'm gonna, strategy. I'm going to I'm gonna need two dresses for yeah. sure because I'm going to need. You got to have the pretty one, the cute slutty yes, one. Yes. And then the, the one lingerie, that's going to be complete. The gangbang one. Yeah. The gangbang everything. Like I just <laughs> love like. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm like literally thinking about it now and I'm just like, wow, like this could be <laughs> so amazing. Do you know what month you want to get married? Honestly, no rush or no rush right now. We we've thought about it. We we've talked about, you know, if we want to do a destination or if we want to do somewhere in Florida or, Mm -hmm. you know, it really just depends right now. We're just really focused on enjoying our engagement. And just a lot of stuff is moving for you. Like, I feel like I'm entering an area era where I'm just like surrendering and like all this crazy shit is happening. Like, I'm just like, you know what? Stuff's happening for you. Take me away and just like let it happen. And like I had been fighting life. Life so hard mm. sometimes um yes. battling back and forth with like yep. making the right choice and making all of these decisions and I learned that like really no decision is the wrong choice obviously if it's like a bad harmful. decision yeah, yeah harmful yeah. towards somebody else yeah but like you really can't make a wrong decision because all my wrong decisions led me here Same. so like yep you know what I mean Let's like all my wrong I'm decisions doing. led me to where I needed to be <laughs> But I wouldn't be who I am without those. I would be a shell of a person without having all of these uh, yep. uh, insane things that have happened in my life. And um, you pleasure know. often requires pain to get yeah, there. Yeah. I mean, for me, at my rock bottoms is when I've had clarity about how to get to the high. Like, yes, truly. Me too. And like those moments where I'm just like on the kitchen floor, just like, crying yeah. like I remember Defeat. that just yeah absolute not knowing where my life was gonna go and it was I knew that it was gonna get better but at the same time I was just so exhausted like mm-hmm. you know going back and forth with before my um before I went to rehab like mm. you know I was finding myself on 
just passed out behind bars. Mm. Um, the relapse. So I'm actually recently sober again after a relapse. And yeah, yeah. Congrats. Thank though. goodness. That's amazing. But it's it. The most painful part of any of it is that is that when you're trying to get sober, yeah. that initial like, OK, I got a week. OK, I got a yep. like it's fucking exhausting. Yeah. And um, and just having to like explain that to the people you're around. And yeah. Like, and it harms <laughs> them, too. Yeah. It's, harmful it, for them. it's like you don't want to make them feel like okay like this a burden yeah somebody they have to like worry about right stuff like that but life like, is so much better sober if you're struggling yeah, oh my it's god so good yeah speak to somebody the sex is weird like, at first but then it gets really good it gets really good <laughs> like sober sex is amazing yeah sex. like it's, it's like so like because i actually remember it like i've had so mm -hmm. many moments when i used to drink Yep. That I would just wake up at these random guys' houses and be like, It's so scary. Where the fuck am I? Yeah. Like, I remember one time, and one of my girlfriends that I'm about to talk about this, she'll know. Is it watching this? <laughs> she left me at her place um, to go hang out with some friends because I had already had a situation mm. that had happened that wasn't going good. Um, but I was over at her place and she was like, Okay, don't leave. Like, oh, I no. will be back in a couple of hours. And I got that courage, that liquor courage. And I was like, you know what? Like, I need a cigarette. And at the time I was smoking. So I walked my baby giraffe legs down the street in Buffalo. And oh, this no. was like 30, to leave. 30 degree weather. <laughs> I left her door open. Oh, no. Yeah. And I just I had just started walking. And this car of guys came up next to me. It was a gorgeous Mercedes. And I was like, wow, nice. Oh, no. I was like, nice car. And they were like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm picking up cigarettes. Oh, and they were gosh. like, we have cigarettes. And I was like, oh my God, perfect. Ugh. And I get in the car. I get in the car with them. And I go back to their house. Alcohol is dangerous, kids. Girl, like I, when I think about that now, I'm like, what right. the fuck? I'm, yeah. Like, yes. but... I was at the time, the validation thing. I was like, oh, you Jericho guys, attention? You, a, yeah. a car full of guys thinks I'm hot. Like, you know, and at the time I feel like I wasn't in my best transition period. Mm. So like, I didn't know if they could tell at first or whatever, but I didn't mm. care. I was getting cigarettes at the time. Yeah. Like, and they had alcohol in the car too. Like, and I was just, you know, that pink Whitney got me girl and the wine. And so, yeah, it was, she put out, um, like she called the cops. Mm. She didn't know where I was because I had passed out at their house after sleeping with a guy. Dude. Um, yeah, Alcohol. I woke up the next morning. She, we didn't talk after oh, that for we a little while. We didn't talk for a long time. Um, just because she, she was scared. She messaged yeah. my parents. She was like, I have no idea where she went. The doors open. Like, and at Ducted the time, we, she wasn't in the best neighborhood of Buffalo, so she wasn't sure, sure what happened to me if yeah. I had a guy I mean, over. I think the distinction, though, is like, and, and what I learned, because I hadn't drank for four years. And so yeah. when I went back out, it was very like, oh, I haven't done this in a while. Right. And it's it's looking at the decision making that happens sober versus drunk. Like, if you have a problem or addiction with alcohol, the decision making is just whoop out the fucking yes. window. Like, it literally gears towards the worst decisions and the logical decisions and the harmful ones versus like sane grounded you know yeah. it's just it's so night and day and it's, i'm just it's, yeah glad we're both super oh, cool. girl, right no we're both um, sitting here we're both alive we're both glowing like i think that's really totally. the most important thing like yeah but we had to go through those experiences to you know i'm sure yeah. without being sober you wouldn't have anything no this, have, this would yeah not like be, i would not be able not to be keep sustainable up anything i mean at it, all. It, it, yeah. Yeah. And I don't know how I figured it out, but I figured it out. And mm -hmm. I was seeing all the wrong guys at the time. Oh, gosh. Alcohol I, brings that up. Yeah. Too. I knew what I could get out of them. Mm. So, like, you know, the bags and like, you know, all of the drugs and like all of this. And I knew I had a problem when one of the guys that I was seeing at the time, his friend wasn't going to give me any, mm. like, wasn't going to sell me it. Cut you off. Wasn't, yeah. He literally yeah. cut me off like Rue. Like yeah, in the, euphoria, the, oh, like I was right, outside right. the door banging on the door because I needed mm. Coke. I needed it. And, yeah. you know, it was, God, like. Different lifetime ago. Yeah. Like I, I, I can't even believe that that was me at that time. So we do have to wrap up here soon. I know. Uh, just talk your <laughs> ear off. Um, would you want to share some advice for a younger trans person? 
um, or anybody just navigating trying to be themselves? Yeah, I think my advice to anybody that is transitioning or wants to transition or anybody that just wants to be seen as themselves, you don't have to live in fear of somebody else's thoughts. You don't have to live your life in a suppressed way where people are going to come at you from every which way, no matter if you transition, no matter, people are going to judge you on anything. So you might as well just be you because you're going to attract the right crowd of people. And I think that's really important because negativity and misery loves company. Mm -hmm. But if you surround yourself with positive people, that misery turns into such a positive supportive system. And, you know, you just, you find the right people through a lot of hardships and don't get discouraged about a bad day because there's going to be so many good days that come after that bad day. And I've had that and I've experienced that and I'm still here and about to go explore Austin some yes, more, girl. go see some friends and just be sexy. Fuck and that's yeah. what it's about. <laughs> Beautiful. Great way to end it. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning into Sex Talk Radio. Please connect with us on social media. And if you haven't already, please come join me inside of the Sexy Society. It is an online virtual community for women to connect and explore with each other. We have weekly lives with past podcast guests and so much more. You can also learn more about my adventures and stories on my private Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash sexy musings. That is S-E-G-G-S-Y musings.